Good morning, family. How are we doing today? Woo! Well, let's stand to your feet if you are able this morning. Our God is good and we have reason to sing. Come on, sing this with me. So I'm singing, you are good. Buried with Christ to rise in your freedom. Oh, cause you are good. Come on. When you make a promise, Jesus, you keep it. Oh, cause you are good. Come on. So I praise your name as long as I'm breathing. Oh, cause you are good. Come on. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing. You tell me. Oh, cause you are good. Buried Oh 
and it's a good day to be in the house, amen. Well, hey, uh, Ashley, I, I don't know if you heard. What? But today's a special day. Really? Today's a special day in the house of the Met. Uh, Ashley, it's Baptism Sunday. Oh, here we go. And let me tell you something. I don't know if you, first off, welcome to you. If you're a guest with us, we're so glad you're here, either in person or online. We're glad you're here, but I'm, I'm just going to warn you, it's, it's about to get a little crazy in the house because we're not only celebrating today some people getting dunked in the water. No, we're celebrating people coming from death to life yeah. today, church. And so I, I, I don't, if, if you're new to the Met, if you're new to the Met, let me tell you, there's, I mean, this is a big day in the house, and, and, and there's kind of a way we do things. And so I don't know if you're, if you're barely on the first cup of coffee. I don't know if you're on cup number two, but I, and I don't know if you're just like, Sid, I, you know, I barely just made it this morning. You know, hey, I, I, it's, it's going to take me a minute to get there. Well, I'm just going to tell you, the Spirit will probably help you, and you better ask the Spirit to help you to kind of come with the energy because let me tell you, when you celebrate people finding Jesus for the first time, celebrating from death to life. There is power, power, wonder-working power in that. And so I would invite you into that today. And so we, we, we're going to do a little test run, Ashley. Is, is, is that okay? We, yeah. we got time for it? Is yep. that okay? And so we're going to do a little test run here. And so what happens around the house is when the person gets dunked into the water and when they come back up, we get a little loud and rowdy and we celebrate Ooh. with them. And so is it okay if we do a little trial run? I just want to see if you're awake this morning. Is that okay? Nine o'clock. Yeah. And so here we go. On the count of three, we're just going to get a little crazy and we're going to celebrate what the Lord's doing. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Come on. Let me hear you. Nine o'clock. Let me hear you. Come on. Okay. Okay. Jody, I, I think it's, it's there. It, yeah. I don't know if it's all the way there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we're going to try this one more time. I don't know if you got a cup of coffee with you. You just take a little sip, you know. I don't know what, what you're doing, but hey, let's do it one more time, and let's give it all we have. Come on, this is Jesus we're talking about here. This is from death to life, resurrection power. Come on, one, two, three, nine o'clock, let me hear you. Come on, come on, here we go, here we go. Come on, let's sing him this gospel today. And time search the world. It couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. And you came along. Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, oh there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better 
Good morning in the house this morning, church. So thankful that you are here. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Hey guys, 
Hey, hey everyone, look up here. Is this thing, is it on? Am I on? Hi guys. Hi, welcome to church. Welcome to the Met. <laughs> Come on. My name's Melissa Williams and- What are we doing? We're welcoming all of the people. For church? Yeah, for church. There's online. Welcome to the online guys, people. And for the people that are here. Welcome. <laughs> Hey, if, what if you're new? What do you do if you're new? Oh, if you're new, guys, first of all, there is a connection card on the seat back in front of you. Which sounds really confusing. Seat back in front. So if you're like one of those people that are sitting where there's no seat back. Like if you're on a front row, you if can't fill out a card. You, no, you can fill out a card, but you got to ask somebody for it. Or you got to turn around and like climb <laughs> over the seat. This you actually is, have to do hurdles. You're going to have to jump you, over. Yeah, this is when you're going to want to do it. But fill it out. Uh, so uh, tell them about our mission. What's our mission? How come I have what? to do all the work? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, how about you tell them the mission? Okay, I'll tell them about the mission. Okay, here's what we're all about at the Met. Inviting people into meaningful relationship with God and each other. That's what we're all about. That's what we're all about. That's our mission. I was going to say that. Ooh, and part of our mission, what helps support our mission, is the offering. Yeah. <laughs> We don't hand it out anymore because nope. of all the COVID stuff. Yep. But no more there, buckets. No more buckets. There's still ways to give. How do you do it? Uh, you can go uh, to the Met uh, dot church uh, backsplash backsplash give. I think <laughs> it's slash. That's what I said. It's a backslash. He said backsplash. And you can even there's uh, on on each side of the auditorium there's these little boxes where you can put your money in. Unless, unless if you won the you want, lottery, then and Venmo. You got, if you got, you're not Venmo. Oh, you. sorry. Okay. Hey, Thanks. girls, look up here. Parents of girls, we have girls conference coming up. And guess what? I'm actually one of the speakers. Not really a full speaker. I'm on the panel. Ooh. April 23rd, Friday. You have to sign up, girls. Get How you sign up. up. How do you sign up? You Melissa? actually, thanks for asking. You get the details and you find other student info at the met.church backsplash, backsplash student. students. Yep. Yep. Mm. This is so this sweet. Is it's so cute. I wish I was a first grader. Well, you kind of. Well, <clears throat> anyway. So we've got this group of kids oh. that have just graduated kindergarten. They here. know how to read. And Pastor Matt is going to give them their very first Bible oh. ever on May the 2nd. Y'all. It's going to be sweet. cute because they're all going to be the same size. Oh, God. The kindergartners As Matt. and Matt. <laughs> That's what uh, I thought. It's going to be a sweet moment. Oh, I love that. This is a pause break for laughter because that was a good one. <laughs> okay, they're good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so we have this thing online called Grief Share. And losing a loved one is just an incredibly painful process. And we don't want you to go through that by yourself. Um, and so we, we want to make sure you know that coming up is our, our next semester of Grief Share. And it's where people are just going to walk along beside you. Uh, the new group starts on May the 6th. Yeah. So that's going to be in your digital bulletin. So that's what we're going to talk about next, our digital bulletin. Yes. How do you get okay. that? So the, di the digital bulletin, um, first of all, okay, you just, there's a QR code. It looks like a box with a whole bunch of just squigglies. Just a squigglies. You just, you don't have to take a picture of it. Just get your phone out. You just get your phone out, but you put your phone and you just kind of go like this and then it pops up the digital yeah, yeah. thing. But here's the thing. We've got cameras everywhere. They're watching we, you. We know who's stealing the cards. So knock it off. Leave, just put your phone up and leave it alone. You don't go to the park and take a picture of a bird and then take the bird home, do you? No, be sure Absolutely don't. Absolutely not. So don't take the car. Just uh, do the little phone. I'm yeah. Sorry. I mean, okay. we're... Let me bring it down. Okay. My goodness. All right. Now are we ready? Yeah. Sid is actually going to share a special moment with us. He's going to share a song that means tons to him, and I am actually so pumped to hear it. Yeah. I love it. Let's listen. It's been such a special, special morning in the house already, and uh, yeah, I, I, I gotta say, uh, first off, we're, we're family, right? In this room, we're family. Is this okay? I'm, I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. Oh, are we family? Come on, church. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. I'm a words of affirmation person, so if that's all you can give me, that's great. See, I, I want to share a new song with you today, um, and it, it's, it's exactly where we are in this, 
in this series. And so if you're just joining us today, um, we're in a series called Second Chances. And uh, man, it's, it's been powerful, hasn't it? It's been so powerful here in last week, Brian Kelly's story, the story today, and my friend Zach. It's truly incredible the power and glory that's been revealed through the stories of, of the lives here in our church. And so something not too many people uh, know in the room, whether you know me or not, uh, this is the first time we're meeting. I'm sitting and so glad to, to be here with you. It's, I'm so grateful that you're here to hear the word of God and, and just the second chances mentality and idea and the second chances God that we serve. But for most of us here, I'm, I'm sure that uh, not too many people know my story. And uh, if I could just, since we're family, we're in the living room together. Um, not too many people know that uh, it's a second chance that I'm even here. Uh, here with you today at the Met. Um, and and it's, it's something that about a year and a half ago, um, I was struggling with this, the first ever, my first ever experience with anxiety and depression. And I don't know if you can relate to that, but about a year and a half ago, um, I, was, I was going to counseling. Uh, I went to counseling for eight months um, every week and just digging through some of the deepest and darkest things that I had gone through uh, growing up, but then something that had led me to a decision that I had made. And, and you know, in that, in that season, the enemy's voice was really, really loud. Um, some friends turned away from me. I, I, the enemy was telling me that nobody had trusted me anymore. The enemy told me that God and other people were just disappointed in me. Um, and it got to the point to where I would hear this voice that I knew wasn't a voice from God, but man, it sounded a lot easier. And it said, man, doesn't, doesn't it just feel a lot easier just to kind of not live anymore? Doesn't that just feel a lot, a lot easier than to keep digging through all of this and what we have to dig through here? And so I would, I would escape to the scriptures. It would be three in the morning. And I'm, I'm walking outside my house and I'm rubbing my chest trying to calm myself down, probably looking like an idiot. <laughs> and just praying for God to help me and help me know his voice because I knew that wasn't his. And then this song came through and there is a line and, and there's a lyric in this tune that I would, I would pray. And it says, when I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. That you're an artist and a potter and I'm the canvas and the clay. And I know nothing has been wasted, no failure or mistake, because you're an artist and a potter, and I'm the canvas and the clay. And so I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you resonate with this. I don't know if you're like, dude, this is over my head, and I'm sorry that happened. I don't know if you're sitting there and you're like, yep. I hear that, I feel that, and I see you, and I resonate with that. But I don't know who needs to hear this today. God is not afraid of your past. And he can use it all. I'm going to say that again. God is not afraid of your past. And he can use it all for your good and his glory. And so I don't know what voices that might be in your head today, but let me tell you, because of the blood of Jesus, the captives are being set free today. Amen. Because of the gospel of Jesus, the, cap, the captives are being set free today. And so if you resonate with this church, I would just want to sing this over you today. And if you want to stand, if you know this song, if you want to stand and worship, I, I would invite you to. 
But let this just be the powerful truth of God over your life, church. Yes, Jesus, we sing this in your name. And in my mother's womb, you formed me with your hands, known and loved by you. Before I took a breath, and when I doubted, Lord, remind me, I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter, I'm the canvas in the clay. And you make all things work together for my future and for together for your glory and for your name yes you do Lord all for my good and for your glory Jesus there's a healing there's a healing light just beyond the clouds Though I've walked through fire, I see clearly now, and I know nothing has been wasted, no failure or mistake. Cause you're an artist and a potter, I'm the canvas in the clay. And you make all things work together for my and for my good you make all things work together for your glory and for you make all you make all things work together and for my future You're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay And I know nothing has been wasted No failure or mistake Cause you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay And you make all things work together And for my future Canvas and the clay, and I know nothing 
us in our unbelief today because man it's hard on this side Lord it's hard and you know it you've seen it by first hand Lord and the enemy's voice it's loud but he's a liar And so, Lord, would your truth and mercies and your grace wash over us today? That you're making something beautiful, and yeah, it's not easy, but you ain't finished with us yet. And you're still working today. And so we look at you in this moment, Lord, and we ask you to give us strength, give us clarity. And help us to see and hear and know the shepherd's voice, your voice, Lord. Help us to flee and run to you and your word, Lord. Lord, we are so grateful that we serve a God of second chances. If it's not beautiful, you're not finished with me yet, Lord. Because of your freedom, Jesus, because of your blood that was shed, the captives are set free today. And I'm set free today, Lord. And I thank you for the miracle that most of us are just in this room today, Lord. What a miracle. But it's all glory to you, and it's all because of you, and it's for your glory. We love you. We praise you. We extol your name today, Lord, and all God's people said, amen, amen. My entire life, I struggled with value and self-esteem, and a lot of the things that I did in my life were to impress my peers, and I spent my entire life trying to uh, win over people. I was 15 whenever I first experimented with alcohol and drugs. Um, a friend of mine had brought some alcohol to school and uh, pretty much dared me to, to drink it. And um, I remember when I drank it, it was seven o'clock in the morning and it's like something clicked in my head, you know, like um, I had that rush of that good feeling and um, like I was just sold from there. I think that's when I became a full-blown addict. I started drinking vodka and taking pain pills. Um, and 
it really just went all downhill from there. Uh, I was in a toxic relationship and there was some infidelity there. And I think once that happened, my abuse uh, skyrocketed and I was taking morphine uh, and Oxycontin and uh, huffing and taking other street drugs. Um, when I was 18, it was the summer after graduation and uh, I was living out of someone else's apartment and my parents and some close friends of mine had an intervention and uh, I ended up going to rehab. After that 30 day span, a week after I got out, I got arrested for DWI and two days later I got kicked out of my parents' house. And at that point I moved in with my then girlfriend uh, and her whole family were drug dealers. So that really just amplified my drug addiction at that point. I hit rock bottom a few times. The last time I was living out of a motel with prostitutes. I had been awake for seven days. I had one hamburger that seven day span and my parents cut me off completely. Um, my employers had fired me. None of my childhood friends would talk to me. Um, I was pretty much just living that horrible drug addict lifestyle. And Mackenzie called me and she wanted to me to come visit her in Houston. And I kept saying, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, you know, I'm busy, which I wasn't busy, but she ended up picking me up and taking me to her apartment and called one of her friends, Shay. Uh, he came over there. He had a testimony where he had recovered from IV drugs also. And he, I remember he kneeled beside me and had me kneel with him and we prayed the sinner's prayer. And then he, I didn't know him from Adam and he, took me in and let me move in with him and his wife for a week. I didn't need a mentor as much as I needed a savior. And so I went from being insecure and broken to being loved and knowing how to love. I, I attended CR at the Met for a while and there was a lot of really awesome people there and the program seemed to really be changing lives. And I, I think at, at the time I was a part of CR here at the Met, I was still struggling with transparency and dealing with uh, being completely open and honest. Um, you know, I, I joined CR and I turned it into a way of elevating my position and, you know, here's this super cool story. Uh, and I wasn't really being real about it. I was using Kratom, uh, not really willing to stop using Kratom, not willing to be transparent about my use. And, you know, I ended up kind of parting ways with CR, but I ended up joining a life group at the Met. And uh, through that life group and through the relationships that we were able to build through that life group, um, I started to become more comfortable with the idea of being transparent and sharing, airing my dirty laundry, you know, to be loved through it instead of trying to conceal it because of a fear of rejection, you know? So God is teaching me to grow in my relationships with people. Right now I'm in a season where I need to just kind of have relationship with others. I think he's teaching me the value of fellowship and brotherhood and community. And so right now I'm just in a season of saying yes. And I think with just everything that's happened with, with the Met, you know, uh, it seems like everything's just kind of falling into place. And, you know, the Met is uh, starting a, a new ministry, Regeneration. And uh, I have had the honor of being asked to be a part of that, you know? And it's just such, it's so amazing to me that this is an opportunity for me to be a part of a ministry where people like me you know, are going to come looking for answers and for truth. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I want, I want them to find Jesus here. I know they'll find Jesus here. And I want to do everything I can so that they see Jesus in me. And so I just want to love on people, man. You know, I really just want to love on people. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sin, 
He made us alive when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you've been saved, Ephesians says. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all that he's done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. And everybody said, you remember these? Anybody remember what this is? Come on, somebody said it. This is a Polaroid camera. Now, these are, these are pretty popular again. Okay, for those of you that have finally figured out that you have a camera on this, now we're gonna go back to this. No confusion. They even have apps now that you can print to a printer that makes the pictures from this look like the pictures from this. These are hot stuff right now. So maybe this group over here. Go ahead, smile, everybody. It's nice. Remember it? And then the film comes out. And then what do you have to do with it? Yeah, all day long, just like this. And this will be developed at about 2.30 this afternoon. Here's... Something that I think is interesting that we need to remember today, and it all hinges right here. Each and every one of us has a story. Each and every one of us is plagued by what's called a sin nature, which means we have a propensity to run in our own direction. Is anybody but me in agreement with me today, okay? We're all there. And what the enemy does is he carries this thing around around his neck like this, and he waits for that slip up to happen in your life, and he's just breathing words of disdain and humiliation, failure. He's telling you, yep, that's who she is. And then what he does for the remainder of your life, even if you find faith, maybe God gives you a second chance like Sydney. Maybe God gives you a second chance like Zach. And you gotta remind yourself, as Scott said last week, that if you don't think you deserve a second chance, we all have to remember that we didn't deserve the first one either. But our God is a God who is rich in mercy and he loved us so much that while we were dead in our sin, through Christ, he made us alive. And where the enemy takes these things and he begins to put them in every place he can find. Is anybody with me at nine o'clock? Are you with me online? Are you with me today? He sets these things in front of me all the time. It's literally like he's got a pair of glasses that he can put on me. The moment I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh, that's who you are. He wants to define you by your failure. The enemy wants to define you by your sin nature. He wants you to believe that the story that you've been given, that the sin nature that is resting in you, that makes you the way you are, doesn't that sound so soothing? But here's the deal. His voice is only as loud as we allow it to be. You have authority through the power of God's word and through a relationship with Jesus Christ to silence the voice of the enemy at every turn if you'll receive it. And where the enemy wants to take a snapshot, a screenshot, a selfie in a moment and tell you that's who you are, he wants to define you by what happened in your life and what you did. God says, no, 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 no. That's not how it works with me. God says, I made you. I'm wonderfully made, fearfully made. In this world, you'll have trouble, he says, but be of good cheer. <laughs> this world isn't all there is. I've overcome this too. You don't believe me? There's a passage if you have your Bible, turn to John 8. And by the way, 
The enemy's voice doesn't just come through his whispers. Sometimes it comes through the shaming from other people around us. Can I get an amen on that? People are mean, y'all. But here's the thing. I'm not gonna read it today. We've got just a couple of minutes left, but here's what I want you to do. There's a story in John chapter eight, one through 11, about a woman who was caught in adultery, it says. And here's what's happening in the story. I'll just tell it to you. It says Jesus had gone back up to the Mount of Olives to be alone with the Father, and he came back to the city the next mor- before the next morning, and it said a crowd started to gather, and Jesus started teaching them. About that time, a group of religious leaders, the ones that they think had it all figured out, the ones that knew the law, the ones that were abiding, the very prim, proper, we have this thing, we know what to do, and you don't, these type of people... They find this lady, they catch her in adultery, if you will. I don't know what all the details of that were. And they bring her out, not just in front of Jesus who's teaching, but in front of the entire crowd. Imagine a crowd this size or bigger listening to the words of Christ and somebody stands up and interrupts and takes someone they call a sinner and they throw her out in front of the whole crowd and said, this woman is caught in adultery. And they look at Jesus, they say, according to the law of Moses, we're supposed to stone her. And then they look at Jesus and they go, what do you say? Now, they were trying to trip Jesus up. They wanted him to say something so that they could use it against him later. But in this particular moment, Jesus, vintage Jesus, I love that phrase, by the way. Vintage Jesus, here's what he does. Just kneels down and he starts writing in the sand. I wish I had a Polaroid in that moment. He begins to write, doesn't say what he wrote. They push him a little farther, he finally stands back up and he goes, okay, okay. I'll tell you what. If there's someone in the room who has never sinned, I want you to pick up the first stone and throw it. It says in that moment they left one by one, starting with the oldest. And before you know it, the entire crowd has dwindled now to Jesus and said sinner. He picks her up by the hand and he asks her a very interesting question. He said, woman, where are your accusers? Let's just pause right there for a second. Jesus did not say, why did you do it? Didn't ask that question. He didn't say, what were you thinking? Don't you know how much I love you? Oh my gosh, I'm so disappointed in you. I'm so ashamed of you. I can't believe in light of everything you've seen, I raised people from the dead for goodness sake. Don't you think I could have done something for you? What were you thinking? Jesus doesn't have that tone at all. He says, hey, woman, where where are the people accusing you? And she looks back at him and she says, they're gone. Jesus is still here. He says, neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. There's really two people that this story is written to. Most people love the story and how it pertains to the grace that Jesus showed the woman, and I think it's amazing. I think it's the same grace that he extends to each and every man, woman, child that we see here that's watching online today. His grace is for all. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The God that we serve is not a condemning God. He is a gracious God, full of mercy. He loved us so much, he loved you so much that in light of your story, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been caught in, that he came to give you life through Jesus the Son. That's how much he loved you. The difficulty is, whereas most people would focus on the grace shown to the woman, I wanna take a second and focus on 
who I believe Jesus is actually talking to in this, mo- in this particular moment. And it's the accusers. You see, Jesus says, where are your accusers, the people that had thrown the lady out there and had caught her, if you will, in adultery? Jesus says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. This is critical this morning, okay? For those of us that believe somehow that there are certain sins that are more uh, grotesque or socially uh, unacceptable than others, you need to see Jesus level the playing field right here in front of everybody. He goes, no, 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 no. Anyone that is without sin, anyone that is not guilty of any wrongdoing, that person has the right and the authority to accuse. And by the way, the only one ever, it was Jesus standing in their midst, and guess who didn't leave? Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. You see, here's the thing about accusations. Accusations is people, us, not living in step with the spirit of God. It is us living in step with the voice of the enemy in people's lives. We're not partnering with the spirit to call people from death to life. We're partnering with the enemy to shame people into hiding and isolation. You see, before we all get self-righteous and somehow believe that, yeah, I know I do this or I've done this or this with that man or this with that woman or whatever you want to plug in there. Yeah, but my sin, have you looked at him? Have you looked at her? Nine times out of ten, when I uh, counsel a married couple who's going through difficulty, do you know what 100% of the conversation is? It's about the other person who's not sitting in front of me. Well, she never, he just doesn't get it. He's, that is the voice of an accuser. And it's not the voice of God. You see, at the Met, it's okay to not be okay. You heard two stories today. A staff member, a guy that's in a small group who God, through Jesus Christ, by his incredible mercy, has drawn them out of what has shamed them and has said, no, 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 there is life in Christ. The people around you that shame you, shut those voices down. Get around life breathers. Get around people who will look at you and say, hey, you know what? I resonate, I'm a sinner too. My sin and yours don't look the same, but I'm not gonna condemn you. I've got way too much going on in my own head, in my own heart, to spend any time coming at you for your sin. The church has to change her voice. Not just this church. The big C church has to get over her self-righteousness because there is a lost community around each and every one of those churches that is not buying what we're selling anymore. They're not buying the voice of an accuser. They have enough of that. The voice of Jesus says his own words, neither do I condemn you. I want you to just let that resonate in your heart today. If you're sitting in a pew, if you're sitting in a seat, if you're watching from your living room today, you are not shamed by the person of God. The guilt that you feel, the remorse, it might be the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but the only reason you're sensing it and feeling it is because he's trying to make a declaration to you, that right there, that's why you need me in your life, Jesus is saying to you. He doesn't walk away from the woman. He simply stands her up. And says, I don't condemn you. Scripture says, there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because the law has been done away with through Christ. Parents. Parents. The children that you've been given in your home. Allow them to... Allow them to belong, but 
before you make them behave. Don't shame and condemn your children because of the hurt and the pain that your parents caused you. Let them walk in grace in your home. Set boundaries, yes. Don't let them do whatever they want, yes. Even punish for wrongdoing, yes. But do so in a way that connects them to your heart of love and gratitude and grace for the gift that they are, not for the obstacle that they are. They are gifts from God. All the voice of the accuser does is make an attempt at reminding you of your chains. Some of them you were born with and some of them you chose. Listen, there are consequences in this life. When you do something, there is a consequence that comes with it. For those of you that have dealt with substance abuse, you know how difficult it is to come out from under that. There's a consequence that comes with it. You get caught by our law enforcement officers. God love them living in the midst of craziness right now. Something happens and you end up having to spend time in jail. Do you feel condemned? Probably in a moment, you feel a moment of shame and guilt. But do you know that Jesus isn't sitting in the jail cell saying, you know what, you can sit here all night. You deserve every bit of this. That's not the voice of God. That's the voice of an accuser. Our God is love. Our God loved you so much that while you were dead spiritually in your sin, he gave you the right to become a son and a daughter of God. If you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. He is a God of second chances. Here's the thing about this woman. We have no indicator about what actually she did with the grace that was given her. We don't really know. We don't hear the rest of the story. Some scholars have painted pictures of certain biblical characters, but I'm here to tell you that there's no indicator as to whether she walked and didn't sin anymore in that particular, we don't know. But each and every one of us have the responsibility to answer the question, what will you do with the grace that has been given to you through the person of Jesus? What are you gonna do with it? Are you willing to come out from behind whatever it is that you're hiding behind? Are you willing to be transparent? As Zach just said, said he's learning. Would you be willing, even in the midst of a congregation like this or through an online chat to raise your hand and say, you know what, I am done hiding. I don't wanna hide anymore. The people around me, it feels like there's a little condemnation here, but I hear the voice of Jesus saying, hey, I don't condemn you. Come on out of that grave. Come right this direction. I wanna walk along, alongside of you. I wanna walk beside you, and I wanna lead you to glorious freedom, but you have to do it my way. Is anyone willing? Is anyone willing to come out from hiding today? Anyone? You see, this story is not just about the woman, it's to all of us. We all used to live that way. If you've been in church for 50 years, you used to live that way. If today's your first day and you've never heard the message of Christ, welcome to the broken family of God. But don't allow the Polaroid of the enemy to define who you are. You see, back to Ephesians 4, and I'll wrap up with this. He says, he raised us from the dead, talking about spiritually. The old man is gone, the new man is come. He says, he raised us from the dead, and he says, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the wealth of his kindness toward us. You see, the enemy uses the Polaroid to tell you who you are and to keep you down. But God uses the Polaroid to tell you, hey, that's what I delivered you from. You see, God is not a God of selfies and snapshots. 
God writes stories and screenplays and movies. And wherever you're at in your development, the question is, will you surrender your life to what he wants to do in you and through you? Will you come out from behind it and will you allow God to be a God of second chances in your life? As I look around this room, the stories of the people that I know well, I see that God is a God of second chances. That God never gives up on his children. Do you believe that? Just say that with me, God never gives up on me. No, 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 no. No, you get coached a lot, I'm not shaming you, but you're better than that right there. I want you to just close your eyes for two seconds and remember where you came from. And then I want you to say it with conviction. God never gives up on me. One, two, three. That's the God that we worship today. That's the God who restores. That's the God who can make all things work together for our good and for his glory. We have to do our part and come to him with open hands, confess our sin, And if we confess our sins, scripture says he is faithful, he is just, he will forgive us, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Five years old, 105 years old, and everybody in between, he's waiting for your submission, put your yes on the table to follow Jesus. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Everybody? Even, even at home, would you just bow your head right there in the privacy of wherever you're watching today? You got your headphones on? Just close your eyes if you're in a coffee shop. Even now, I believe with all my heart that the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone right now who's watching. Someone who's on campus, someone who's online. I don't know who it is, but God is speaking to you. With your eyes closed, your head bowed. If you need to confess your sin and you need the forgiveness that God offers through Jesus and you need to live a new life in Christ, would you just be bold and raise your hand high in this room, anyone in this room, anyone online? I've got you, thank you. Yes. Don't be scared, don't be shy about it. Yeah, I see you over there. Yes. He's he's working all things. Yes. Come on. If you raised your hand, I just need you to, uh, listen, I just want you to pray this with me. I want you to believe in your heart what we're talking about. It's not the prayer that saves. It's a condition of surrender from your heart to the Lord right now. If that's you, you just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for sending Jesus and for his voice of acceptance and not condemnation. I confess my sin. You know what it is, God. I release control. I give you my life. Heal my heart. Write a new story. I surrender to you. My all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we celebrate those that have walked from death to life, even in this moment right now? Everywhere, all in the room, here's how we're going to finish today. Would you stand? As we exit today, I'm going to have a group of volunteers that are going to be right here along the front. They'll also be in the back in our response area. If the Lord is still working in you, if he's still moving in your heart, moving in your life right now, and you need to respond to God, don't waste another minute. Come talk to us. Let us pray with you. Let us figure out what we can do to come alongside of you. I'm so proud of those who took a step from death to life today, who had the boldness to raise your hand. Listen. There's no condemnation for you. You are in Christ Jesus. You have a new life in Christ. He's writing a new story. 
And God bless you and welcome to God's family today. One more round of applause for those. That's what it's all about. We're going to say it one more time before we go. God never gives up on me. Are you ready? Look at the person next to you and say, you ready? One time. It's like, listen, I'm a coach. I'm a high school softball coach. I get them all the time and I get their eyes. I'm like, as loud as you can, I want you to scare the other team. I want you to freak them out in their dugout because of how loud you are. All right? I want the people that are sitting out at Mills and Jones to be like, I think the spirit just fell at the Met Church inside that room. I want it to go crazy loud. Are you ready? God never gives up on me. One, two, three. God never gives up on me. You believe it? God bless you. We'll see you next week.